Hey everybody, Patty Ann here, welcome. Listen, see that girl back there? That's my little baby sister, Jean Frieda. She loves to shop and I don't. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna give me a challenge every single week. It's gonna be like a mystery for me and I hope she's not gonna try to stump me. I hope that's not her plan. But anyway, she's gonna send me like a, a mystery box or a, well, yeah, I guess they call them mystery boxes like Cricket has in those places. She's gonna send me a mystery box and tell me what she wants me to make and then I'm gonna try to make it. So, let's see, let me get connected here on my thing down here. All right, so Tammy's here and Stephanie, good. And Valerie, hey Valerie. All right, so Jean Frieda is gonna send me this stuff once a week and this week, I sneaked and peeked at it because I was afraid of what she was going to send me because I wasn't sure if she was going to try to stop me. You know how little sisters can be, maybe. So let's look down here and I'll show you what I got. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Deanna. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I guess I should wait a minute. Let me pour a little bit more coffee and I'll wait for just a few minutes for some more people to get here. So if you got your mug, you got your coffee, say, y'all remember my bling anything mug that I made? All my rhinestones are still on there perfectly. Looking good. So anyway, so let me just pour a little of this while we're waiting for a few more people to get here. I'm not sure if Jean Frieda will be joining us or not. But uh, like I said, she loves to shop. Look at all those bags she's got. Most of you probably like to shop. I just don't like to shop. So this works out perfectly because I never have the stuff that I want to make the things for you guys. So she likes to shop and she likes to know what kind of things are good for home decor. So she's sending them to me and then I'm being challenged to make whatever it is she sends. So first I'm gonna show you what all she sent. Then I'll show you the picture that she sent me that was to be my inspiration for this. So, oh no, you got jury duty. Ooh, bye, see you later. Hope you can come back and watch the replay. Yeah. Good luck. Hey, Carol, Tennessee, and Rebecca, hey, and Deborah, hey, how you doing? Louisiana, cool. All right, so let me show you down here. So she bought everything from Joann's, and you can notice, I, you probably can't see it, but her name, Frida, is here. It's her middle name. So these are the things that she got me for my challenge. And I'll actually have the link for this wood down below let's see where shall I show it this way I guess in case you'd like to get this same thing to work on this project because this comes as a three pack and it's really nice because it already has the holes drilled in it so it works perfectly so let's do this so that's the wood and then she also wasn't sure what vinyls I had so she got me some Cricut vinyl so I got it in black brown This pretty red, it's not like a right fire engine red, it's a, I don't know what you'd call that, it's a different kind of a red. Okay. Oh, you know a lot, little sister. Oh, oh, you're the sneaky little sister, huh, Rebecca? My little sister used to tell on me all the time. Matter of fact, when I got my ears pierced, I got in so much trouble because I pierced my ears. And don't you know, later on, that little sister that told on me, she had hers double pierced, and who knows, maybe even more than that by now. But she told on me and I got grounded for piercing my ears back in the day. Anyway, and so I have the four vinyls and then she got me this leather lace. So I'm hoping what we're gonna do is that she's going to be able to use some of these in her future projects. And I'm paying her to, to purchase the thing. She has a spending limit <laughs> so that she doesn't break my bank. But uh, those are the things that I have that I'm supposed to create with. So I'm looking forward to uh, every week her doing this because I love creating and crafting and doing things for you guys, but I hate the shopping part. So this works out perfectly. So let's look at over here. Okay, there's my website. And actually, while we're here, I'll show you that you can grab both of the files that I'm going to show today, but I'm just going to go into depth on one of them right here if you go to the library of free files up here 
you can get into the library if you know the secret word. And the way you know the secret word is just signing up for the newsletter, which is right here. And once you get the newsletter, you'll have the secret code to get into the library. And that's where we have all the files that we've been developing. You probably remember the craniums. And this shirt, I think this would be really groovy if you were dressing up for Halloween for uh, something um, 60s. You know, give me the beat, boys, to free my soul. Anyway, and then there's some Halloween things and some Thanksgiving. And here are the two that I'm going to talk to you about today. And those of you in my Patreon class, you recognize this guy, the boots, because we learned how to do all kind of different SVGs with him and just really make him and mix him up and make him really cool uh, different ways. So anyway, you would just click on one of these two to download it. So now let's go to Silhouette. All right, so this was Jean's and Frida, Jean Frida. <laughs> she hates her middle name. She was named after our grandma. And this was her inspirations. She saw this and she likes the little red truck. And look how much this thing costs here. Now it's on canvas, but of course we could do it on canvas if we had a, a reverse canvas or whatever. But I'm gonna do it on that wood that she sent me. Now, and if you're somebody that likes the chalk look, you could paint the wood if you wanted to first, but she just wanted me to do it on the plain wood, so that's what I'm gonna do. Check out the price of this thing. You never told on your sisters? Well, I used to tell on my brothers, and then they would get paddled, and I would cry because I felt bad because I was the one that told on them. And anyway, <laughs> all right, so. Let's move this inspiration over here out of the way. And I'll bring in the thing that I made. It's not totally the same. Matter of fact, I'll just put them side by side so you can see a little bit. It's not totally the same thing, but I was just using that as my inspiration. So the reason why I put rice farm fresh Christmas trees is because my nephew Eric is getting married in 2020. So this will be one of his first Christmas things that he can put out with his new bride next year. And so their wedding, their date will be established in 2020. Hey, Chan, or Chow, Chan, I'm glad you made it. Uh, let's see. So what I was gonna show you that you could do is easily change up the name and the date that it was established. First, I'm gonna show you how to do it in silhouette then we'll flip over to Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how to fix it there. So let's say our last name is Poole. I know somebody with a last name of Poole. So if I'm doing this in silhouette, the first thing I would do is just click on it and right click and say ungroup. So that, let me move this out of the way now, way over there, there we go, all right. So that's going to allow me to move this black part right off of here to work with it because I wanted to say pool up here instead of rice. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to right click on it and see can I ungroup it anymore? No. Can I take the name rice out of there? Not easily. So all I have to do in silhouette is to come up here to object up at the very top. Oops, I got to click on it first to highlight it so something is selected. Then I can come up here to Object, Release Compound Path. That's gonna make the letters look really strange, like the cutout parts are gonna turn black, but that's okay, because we're gonna fix it in a jiffy. So I'm gonna say Release Compound Path. See how I said that? Look at that R got changed in, colored in. Hey, Carmen. So I'm gonna go ahead, and now I can select the name Rice and just move it right out of there and I can actually just delete it by hitting delete on my keyboard. Then I'm gonna grab all of this stuff again. Oh, unfortunately I don't know when the pools were married so we'll just pretend like they were married, they're gonna be married this year. I could change this wording or this established exactly the same way by changing the date here. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything because we certainly don't want, let me show you, clue in, uh, scroll in. We certainly don't want all of these letters blackened in like that. So all we have to do is come back up here to object and make compound path. So before we release the compound path and that let us get rid of the 
text at the top and now we're going to say make compound path and that's going to fix it so that these letters aren't filled in like this anymore. Perfect, just like that. So now I'm going to put the word, the name pool up here. So I'll just come over to the text tool on the left hand side and I'll type in the name pool. Let's see, did I have it all in caps? I think I did. Put my caps lock on, P-O-O-L-E, pool. And then I think the font that I used for all of these is Georgia. I like that because it has a little bit of a fanciness to it, but not too much. Because I wanted this to look pretty clean and kind of nice. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to come over here. Now, some of you, if you do have the Silhouette Business Edition and you haven't updated lately, recently, you yours won't look exactly the same as mine because look what this looks like now where you make your own font. They've changed the little icon here. But anyway, we're going to use the one above that. It says text style panel. I'm going to click on that to open it and I'm going to get the Georgia font because I really truly believe that's the one I used. I should have written it down. So they're in alphabetical order as you know I could have typed it at the top but I'm just scrolling. There's Georgia. Okay. I don't know if I could make that bold or not. Okay, I'm going to bring that over. So now all I could do, all I can do is put this up here if I want to. Now the other thing that I might want to do is to go ahead and stretch these letters out some so that they're not that small. So to do that, again, I would double click on this word pool to get it back to text editing. And you know it's in the editing function because of the green box that's around it and this bar that's at the edge. So once I have it as text editing, I can come way over here to the text style panel again and just come down here to underneath where it says line spacing, it says character spacing. And I can either put in a percentage here or I can just use this little slider and move it like I like. And you know, if I want to, I could have it, I guess that's as big as I could make it for there. I don't really think I'd like it that far apart though, so I think I'll double click on it and go a little closer together like that maybe. That looks good. So the next thing that I would do is I would just come over here, highlight it, and change its color to black. And I think all these things are black. They should be black, black. Double check. Yep. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to scroll back out so we can see everything. And oh, actually, what I better do is I'm going to highlight all of this again. And especially if you are changing this over in Silhouette for your Cricut machine, don't forget to grab all the same color and come up here to Object, make a compound path. And then we can bring this over here just like this. And let me scroll in for you. I don't know if you can tell, but the little wheels are weird. The black came in front of the brown part of the wheel. So all I have to do is click on the black part, highlight it, and say send to the back. And then my little brown part of my wheels is there. Which it looks like it got moved a little bit. There we go. So then all I would do is I would just go ahead and group this and it's ready to be made. In Silhouette, all that I did was this. And let me get rid of the one over there because it's going to confuse us a little bit. The sample one, remember if you came in late and didn't see, this was the inspiration that Jean Frida had given me. She had seen this and she wanted me to make something similar to it. So I just used that as my jumping off point. Notice how much this one costs. Of course, it does say it's on canvas, and we could easily put it on one of our reverse canvases if we wanted to. Also, if you're in my Patreon group, um, if you wanted to make it all black, because we're just using one color right now, uh, we could screen print it on fabric or on a piece of canvas, and we're learning about screen printing this Saturday. Anyway, that's in the Patreon classes. So let's go back, scroll back in so we can see. 
And by the way, I did draw a box so I knew how much space I had to work with because if you look down here, this is only so big, right? So I measured it and I saw that it was eight inches wide and probably eight by eight would be a good size because I have this little hanging spot out here and that's why she bought me this um, leather lace to go with it. So what I did do when I was designing this was I did come over here and got a shape, the square, and just drew a square. And then I came up here to where the sizing was and I made it eight by eight. Now remember, that's as big as I have. I mean, I don't have totally eight by eight. But first, let's uh, go ahead and right click on this and send it to the back. And now I'm just seeing, is that gonna fit within the dimensions that I have? And that fits beautifully just like that. So now I don't want this anymore because I don't need it to cut or to print. So all I'm gonna do if I have a cameo now is come over here to send and I'd uncheck everything first over here. And I would do maybe the black first. Oops, that's the brown. Do the black first. So notice when I clicked on the black that all of the things that are black, uh oh, you're right, thanks. All of the things that are black over in here got um, highlighted. That means they're going to be cut after those would be cut, and of course I would move them up here into the upper left hand corner. After that was cut, I would uncheck that and maybe do the red, and I'd probably move the truck. I would ungroup it and move the truck up here to the left hand corner, because I like everything up in the upper left hand corner. And I would just go through like that, then I would do the green things, and then the brown. I did. <laughs> Thanks Rebecca, I'm glad you guys told me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's all I would do is check through these. Now I do need to tell you, look over here right now. One of mine, the black one says acetate sheets thin. Not sure why that is, but what I like to do is this. Let me see if I can show you, bring you back down here and hopefully remember to switch you back. All right. So this is my new Cricut that Jean Frieda bought me the new vinyl. So what I did was I made sure, I did a test, I always do a test cut. And that's right down here in the lower right hand corner, which you can't see this moment on my screen. But what I do is when I find the test cut that works, I write down the numbers so every time I don't have to rack my brain and wonder where should I start, what should I use? Because you need to know that even though it says vinyl mat is one of our options, Everybody's vinyl mat is different. 651 vinyl is different than Cricut vinyl, is different than Silhouette vinyl, is different than you know, Caesar vinyl. So they're all just a little bit different. So it's a good idea to keep track of what works for that specific one for your machine. So as I said, I, what I usually do is I'll come right up here to where it says test and what it will do is make a little triangle inside of a little square, and it'll pop that back out for me, and I can check it to see how well it weeds. If it weeds well, I'm great. So, on this green one then, what I would have done was, according to my notes, right here, I would make it vinyl matte. There it is. And I would look Oh, let's see, I'd have to click on that one to highlight. There we go. And then, well, I don't have my machine set in, but there would be the way that I could set it right down here so that I have the exact uh, things that I wanted here, the four, the 10, and the five. Anyway, all right, so that's what I would do in Silhouette. Now, at the very end, I am gonna actually put this together because I've already cut out all of these things, so you'll get to see what it's gonna look like on this final piece of wood. But before we do that, let's refresh our memories on if we're designing this in silhouette. Remember what you want to do is you want to save these things. Um, for what? Let me ungroup this. Right click and ungroup. 
So what you want to make sure that you do is you grab all the black and you come up here to object, make a compound path. And what that does is instead of each one of these little things going over into design space as a separate layer, this is all going to come in as one layer all together and it's perfect. The same thing with the trees. And the way you do this is you'll just come up here to this paint palette. It's probably the easiest way. It says select by color. And you would come over here and say by fill. And if I was wanting to select the green, I'd select that. It would highlight all of the green in my image. And then I could right click and say make a compound path. But since I've already done that, that's not one of the options. But that has already whoops, been made a compound path. So it's good. And I've done the same thing with the brown. There, the wheels are brown, and this part of the truck is brown. But again, I would just click, not come over here, select by color, click here, and then come over here and right click and say make compound path. Notice that's not an option. I can release the compound path, but I don't want to. I want to leave it made. So all I would do now if I was using this in my Cricut because this is the beauty of this program. You can make things in this program so much easier than in Design Space and use these in Design Space. Easy peasy. So all I would do is group this back together. Now to use this in Design Space, whether you're using a Maker or the Explore Air, which is what I have, you would just come up here to File, Save As, Save to the lot, Heart, to your hard drive. You can also save it to the library. You'll have a library if you have this. But I would save it to my hard drive and I would name it and I would save it as an SVG file right here. SVG. Okay. So let's go over to Cricut Design Space and let me show you what it looks like. And here we go. I've already brought it in. Oopsie daisy. So if I went to upload, let me just show you what it looks like. Upload an image, browse, and as I said, you can just download this right from my website and not have to make anything if you just have a Cricut machine and you do not have the software. But if you have the software, I recommend you change your stuff up over there. It's easy. Um, let's see. Where was it? Oh, dear me. I should have named it something easy to find. Okay, one of the things I may have done, it might be in this file right here, because I zip all those things up for you that are on our website. I've made them into zipped files. So it might just be there. Oh, there it is, okay, cool. All right, so there it is. I opened it up, it looks just like this. And then I can put name over here and some tags so I can find it easily. And then I can say save. There it comes in beautifully, just like that. Insert it, and now I'm gonna have two of them in here. Let's get rid of this first one, delete. So notice how it comes in. Like I said, just four little things because there are four, just four colors. I will have to resize it to fit whatever I want. But if I had not saved those in that fashion over there by um, making them a compound path according to color, like I said, each one of these letters would have been separate. Now, for this one, it's going to be really, really easy to change the name at the top because all I have to do is use the contour feature. So, just going to click on this, and then all I have to do, oh, I got to ungroup it first. See, it's all grouped together. When I clicked on it, everything over here got highlighted. So, I need to ungroup it. Then I can click on just the black layer. Notice over here it's selected. Then I could come over here to contour. And I can contour out the name. And I'm going to make this smaller so I can see it all. Okay, I'm going to contour out the top name. So I'm going to click on these. 
and as I click on them, they're going to they're being erased or hidden. Uh-oh, something's going on. What's going on? Hold on one sec. All right. I need I'm going to move this over. I like to leave this way over on the left-hand side so then what my contour box opens up, I can actually see what's happening over here. I lost the H somehow. So let's click on this again. Okay. And let's go back to contour. And I want to get rid of the R. Huh. See, I guess I could just do it like that. But where the how do I get rid of the H? And the I. That I. Not that I. Okay, you see, this is just a little, to me, it's a little bit more fiddly. Maybe it's that eye. Yeah, that's the one I wanted back. All right, let's take a peek and see what we have. Oh, I still have something missing. Let's go back to contour. I, there's an S that's missing. So where's the S that I contoured out? Should only be one S. There we go, contoured out. Let's see. hope that's it. Okay, there we go. So now we're ready, and we can add in our own name. So let's say again we're going to do pool. I'll come over here to the text. Come down to the text box down here and add in pool. And once again, I'm going to change this to be Georgia font. So as you know, with Cricut Design Space, you just have to come up here to where it says font. Use the drop down menu. And you can come over here. It's probably easier to type in Georgia. There it is. Click on that and it changes it automatically to Georgia. And then I can just bring this up here. Oh dear. Let's see. Let's undo what I just did. Undo, undo, undo. I want to make sure I bring that up above. There we go. And again, I can change the spacing of these letters. If I double click, I come up here to letter space up here at the top and I can change the letter spacing by clicking here and make that however I would like it. Oopsie. All right, and then I would make sure everything was centered well. And then I could do the same thing with the 2020. I could contour that out and change that to whatever date. And what I would want to do now, of course, is uh, click on this part, look over in the Layers panel, hold down my Shift key, and click on the, pool, the word Pool, because I want those attached. I'm going to say Attach, and I'm hoping I'm remembering correctly, yep, for Design Space, because I want this to happen like this. When I go to Make It, this should all stay exactly the way I want it to and cut just like that so that when I have it on my vinyl, it's ready to go. Same thing with the door and the bottom part of the uh, truck and the wheels, the trees, obviously, and the truck. So all I would do is uh, continue and make that just like that. It's easy peasy. Now, the thing is, for this Christmas word that I was able to do like this easily over in uh, silhouette business edition this uh, way it nicely curves here you can't very easily do that at all in Cricut Design Space that's one of the reasons why I would more recommend um, the silhouette business edition and just for the heck of it I'll show you right quick how to do that um, I'll just type in the word Christmas well maybe all caps again C A R I S D M A S and this is just a refresher for those of you in the um, Patreon class. So I'd highlight this, and then what I could do is just come way down here on the lower right hand corner. So I can click on this little triangle and out shoots this part of my menu that wasn't visible. I'm going to check on this or click on this part that says open warp panel right here. And I, st I have this selected, right? You can tell it's selected because there's all those boxes around it. I'm going to say Warp Selected Shape. 
So that's going to allow me to warp the shape similar to what I had done with Christmas right here. But I like to have some more um, control over what's being warped and how it's being warped. So I like to up the number of columns that I have right here. I usually make several, like three or four. And then there's one other thing I like to do. I like to come up here into the ruler and drag one down like this. You see that little line that I'm bringing down? Hopefully you can see that. I should probably scroll in. All right. Maybe now you can see the little line a little bit better. So once I click off of that, if I just do one click back on, I get those same boxes back that I had before for warping. So what I want to do is I want to take this far um, lower orange box and I'm going to bring that straight down, straight down, till the C touches that line that I dragged down from the ruler and let go. And I'm going to do the same thing with the S. Take this far end right box, drag it straight down, straight down, straight down until it reaches that line down there, just like that. And then I noticed that my S, this stuff looked a little bit wonky to me. So I did change that just a little bit by getting these internal ones and pushing it up just a tiny, was it the inter? Yeah, the internal little dots here and pushing them up just a tiny little bit just because I was trying to make them look a little bit better. So I can make that black just like that. And you see how quick and easy that is over here? Oh, it's so easy to do this. Okay, so let me get rid of this. And then I'm gonna bring you down here so that now I'm gonna put this together. Let me move my chair back. And I was really pretty well organized today uh, because I was afraid I was going to lose some stuff. So let me show you some of the things that I did here. I just have this on a piece of styrofoam. And what I did, let me push some of these things back. Okay. So what I did first was, because I wasn't sure how this was going to look, I just did a fast printout on cardstock so that I could take it, and I just have these pinned onto some styrofoam, I could take it, get out my piece of wood, you know, before I went to all the trouble and expense of cutting my vinyl, and I didn't even need to do this on cardstock, I could have done it on paper. But I wanted to see, now is that gonna look good there? And I was like really pleased, I thought that's gonna be perfect just like that. So. Then, the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to start putting these things on here. I've already, you know, obviously cut these and weeded them. I'm going to put them on with the transfer tape now. So, we put this here. And I was afraid I was going to lose some of the little pieces. That's why I did make sure to uh, pin them onto that board for myself. So, this is going to be first. So I have my transfer paper, transfer tape, and first thing I'm going to do is this part. So I'm going to bring this down, kind of put it in a U shape first, like this. And I start from the center and work my way out, and I can use a squeegee guy, go this way. I didn't try this beforehand, so I am just a tiny bit nervous. Every time I do this, these live things, I get just a little bit nervous thinking, look how tiny those letters are. Uh-oh, got this stuck to my paper top. Let's see, how are we going to do? Please, please, please. Close. The little ones are giving me a little bit of trouble, but not much. They're actually cooperating pretty well. The squeegee that I have here is really bendy, so I might decide to get my other one instead because this one might be a little too bendy.
Once I get to the larger letters, it shouldn't be as hard. And obviously, let's get my other squeegee. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hear that? That just, it like that squeegee. Much better. Come on. Sometimes you can just go like that with your finger and push the thing back down. I notice I'm missing a little, oops, you can't see much because of my big old hand. I'm missing a little dot for my Fraser fur dot. So I gotta go back down there, see if I can get it to go on. Nope, not yet. There it does. Good, good, good dot. <laughs> little part of the E is trying to come up with me. Sometimes if you go from a different angle, it makes a difference. There we go. The type, this is Cricut Permanent Premium Vinyl. I'm not sure what kind of uh, transfer tape I'm using. I didn't keep that labeled. Which it would probably be smart if I did because then I could keep track of which ones seem to work better. Getting close. Always have trouble with little letters, especially Y when I'm trying to do a Christmas ornament. Even clip in between doesn't help, huh? Is that when you're trying to do unrounded bulbs and that kind of thing? Because I know that's what's recommended. Some days you do this and they just come, it comes right off, and then other days you struggle. So I don't know if it's the uh, type of transfer tape that I chose to use. Because I really should have been able to just pull this right off in one little swoop. certainly isn't because these letters up here are not small. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this thing off of here so it doesn't keep folding back down. There you go. Okay, that's better. Go from a different angle. promise you I'm going to throw this piece of transfer tape away because this shouldn't be this hard. Come on, last little bit. You can do it. letter. There we go. Woo! Yay. Okay. So, let's make sure I didn't lose anything and all that. Oh, my R. 
from cedar got messed up a little bit. I'm gonna get out my pin pen and see. Hmm. I may have to cut another R, but I won't do that and drive you guys crazy while you're here. Let's see, cedar. That's a bummer. So I'm trying to move it around with my pin pen, but it still is a little bit messed up. So I might make another R, probably will. We'll see. All right, so now I'm just gonna put this down, kind of, kind of eye, just eyeballing it as best I can. That looks good. Okay, hopefully it's going to go on here now. Since this is one of Jean Frieda's challenges, you know, I haven't tried any of this. I did, like you saw, already cut it, but... So, that's what makes Jean Frieda's things a little bit scary. Okay, this is working, thankfully. Whoa, except for the M. Get down there. All right, so the next thing I decided I would do, I think, yeah, is the truck part. Okay. And unfortunately, I think I have the same type of transfer paper right here, but it shouldn't be a big issue because this is just one solid piece. So this should work easily. And if it doesn't, boy, oh boy, oh boy, there we go. Okay. So now I know how to place this because of the little tires and the little exhaust pipe and the thing in the front. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now I think I'll do the trees. Trees will be next. I kind of cut those off, you'll notice, here so that they wouldn't be lumpy underneath the truck. And if I was smart, seeing how I'm doing this in front of everybody, I would cut a little tiny piece of this transfer tape instead of using this big piece and chancing messing up stuff, like having it go on those letters up above. So I think I'll just do this with my finger a little bit to get it started and get this transfer tape off of here quickly and then push this down. And I could put this over top if I want to now and just squeeze you on top like that. It's just the paper, the backing. Okay, the last thing I have to do is the part of the truck and then there's the hang tie as well. So these are the tires from the truck. Yeah, I'd like to know what brand it is that you're using, Carmen, because I hate this whatever I'm using. It's not, dude, I don't like it at all. There's no way, there's no reason those letters should have been that difficult to take off. Okay, there we go. Okay, now the center this up. Um, this brown one that's like perpendicular to the bottom one, it goes directly under the window. Like that. That looks good. And again, I'm going to be careful so I don't accidentally pull up these other things. Perfect. And so so, let me put this back on here. And I'm going to take the shiny side again and put it down on here just so I can burnish this and make sure it's on there well. And I could do the same thing with the text. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, that turned out pretty cute so far. Now the next thing I have to do, and she didn't tell me which color I was supposed to use, so I'm assuming it may be black. And I'm not the creative one who would know what to do with this, so who knows what I should do. Maybe all I should do is tie a knot and loop it. Because I don't think a bow would look good. What do y'all think? Hmm. You love anything with the Christmas red truck? <laughs> well, we're, I think we're going to use the little truck in our class on Saturday, but it's not going to be red. It's going to be black since we all have um, uh, black ink. So what do you think? Do I just... I'll tell you what I am going to do just to start with. I'll do this and while I'm waiting for you guys to catch up to where I am. And you can tell me if you think I should have made a bow. All I'm going to do is tie a knot in this. Like this. I hope I made it long enough. Huh, maybe I didn't. I don't know if you guys craft like I do. Like, huh, I should have done this, huh. Okay, now I was thinking I could stick this through here. What do you do? Make this. Okay, that's not right. That's not how I want to do it. So I want to stick, I think I want to stick this part through here first, maybe? You guys are probably like yelling, no, no, that's not right. So somehow, okay, there we go. So what I'm trying to do, I don't know about that. I guess that's okay. All right, so there we go. So it could just hang like that, right? On a hook somewhere. I could probably make this better so it wouldn't be showing the knot. Anyway, I think that turned out pretty cute. What do you think? Do I need to redo that R? What do you think? Let's see if I can get a clip there. I think this turned out super cute. I'm really liking this a lot. So don't forget now, this is free. This, um, file is free over on my website in the library as well as that other one so let's see if I can find that one to show you again uh, not exactly you may have seen it over on our Facebook group because it was in the beginning where I showed you how to or how to uh, please join us here in the live presentation so I'm pretty thrilled with that hey Jean let me tell my sister hey Jean I did it <laughs> It turned out beautifully. Thanks for the first challenge, <laughs> little sister. Can't wait to see what you send me next week. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is this really is fun because, like I said, I hate to shop, but I like to craft. So it's a challenge to make things work, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's cute, Jeannie. So, so on Saturday, we have our regular class. Uh, actually, no. The, um, oh, it shouldn't say 8 p.m., 1 p.m. for the screen printing. No, it's going to be our regular class at 10 for our screen printing class. It might go over a little bit, depending, you know, may, may not. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll be sending you the file that I'm going to use for mine, and you're welcome to use that if you want to. I'd probably recommend it for your first thing. And just have a, if you have an old T-shirt or something that you could screen print on just to practice, don't expect the first thing that you do to be perfect. So, it, it, but you'll get the technique and you'll be able to do all kind of stuff. So, aw, thanks, Carmen. Yeah, I hope my sister likes it. She gets the product. <laughs> That's what she gets for her work. <laughs> so. All right, you guys have any questions? Let me look back right quick in the um, comments and see if there were any questions or anything. Probably not. But I hope you guys do let us know which... Um, a transfer tape you love the best because obviously that one wasn't working very well for me at all. I was really struggling. Whew. Okay, let's see. You did 127 mugs? Oh, I bet you were almost bald. Oh my, is that what you said? I gotta read that again. I was almost bald after 10. Okay, okay, okay. And so you found a good one. Aw, phew. 
almost bald. That makes me laugh. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up, please. <laughs> and share this. Okay, so don't read. Oh, yeah, I can show you that other truck really fast in case you're wanting to get it. Um, that's on my website. Let's see. Let me show you here and here. Okay, so the other truck, in case you should want it, is. Did I pass it already? Yes, it's this one right here. I can open it up actually here, here. So this one, again, the font that I, oh, can you see this? Yes. Again, the font that I use for this one is Georgia, and that's my last name. And obviously, you could put your own last name in here. I just put this little sign on here. You can either have, you know, a tree farm name here or not. Um, you know, there's, it's so easy to change this one up. And again, in silhouette, all you have to do is ungroup. And let's see, is this, okay, get rid of that because we don't need that at all. There's all the black pieces that are together. And see, those have been converted to a path, to um, a path, compound path, so that when it goes to Cricut Design Space, it's just one cut file, one piece. So what we'd need to do, we can't ungroup anymore. So what we'd need to do is release compound path, which makes all those things turn in weird. Get rid of this last name, and then just to get rid of it and maybe write in Sanders. Oop, doo -doo, Sanders. Where's my board? S -A -Cap, all caps, S-A-N, oops. S-A-N-D-E-R-S. -E and again, what I said I used was Georgia. I just like that font a little bit sometimes. It's not as thick as the one I really like to use too is Freshman. Let me show you how big Freshman would be because I wanted a little bit of those edges. But see, Freshman to me is a little bit too thick, and that's why I liked Georgia. So let's see, Georgia. Whoops, I gotta highlight it first and then change it to Georgia. Recently used Georgia, and I just thought that looked a lot cleaner and nicer, I just like that. And then of course for this one again, I would come down here to the character spacing and space them further apart, you know, whatever fits whatever fits whatever you like and then I would of course grab all of this okay, but first you know what I'd probably do is change the Sanders name to black just so they're all black and then I'd grab it all and come up here to object or right click and go make compound path and that fixes all those little spaces again so they're proper and then all the brown is together notice that because that's all a compound path The trees, if you wanted to, the way I did the trees on mine, if you want to do it on this one instead of having it this way, what you could do is what I did was I dragged down a line from up here so I knew where my truck part started, if you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Draw that right down. Then I moved this out of the way, and I got my knife tool, and I just brought my knife over and just dragged it across right here. You know, I think it was on auto apply. So yeah, so I can just get rid of those pieces that were inside if I don't want all that extra bulk. Then I put my truck piece back up in here, and this here, and again I can put this back behind. It's in front though. I don't want it in front. All you have to do is right click and say send to the back, and it's perfect. Just gotta align it again. But of course the aligning will happen when you are using the vinyl, so it's not that big a deal. So that's it. Amazon is your husband's friend. <laughs> oh my gosh, they say he miss him. You like to shop for crafting supplies? Yeah, I don't like to shop for clothes, shoes, even crafting supplies. I hate to leave my little area here. Okay, well thank you all very much for joining me. You'll have to give me and uh, her <laughs> a thumbs up 
Also, give Tammy a thumbs up. I couldn't do any of this if it wasn't for Tammy's help. So, give all three of us a thumbs up, and we'll see you again soon. So, thanks again. Bye.